footage. I used it to through my shirt. Yeah. And up uh, here. Directed President Reagan in a commercial in 1992. Yeah. And that's the mic we used. Really? He was doing a political endorsement for the governor of Utah. And he told us, he, he was like, as we were tripping about, he was telling stories about Frank Sinatra. And he was drinking water and said, I, I roll tape up behind the scenes so I have it so people know like, Yeah. He said, I was told that when you speak, you drink warm water. And the one who told me that, the first was a Baptist minister, the second was Frank Sinatra. Yeah. yeah. So we have, I had an hour with him, and it's just that's terrific. The funniest guy. He's just telling great jokes. Okay. Uh, the mighty have fallen after yeah. an hour with him, ten long. minutes with me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Incidentally, I don't yes, hear very well. Any any little little yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. You got to well, say a few loud ones. Thank you. Jason, Jason, Dad. Last interview I did yesterday, the guy gave me a mic to hold in my hand. It was here, and it was so easy. Just yeah, they don't do that anymore, though. And you're not kidding anybody, because everybody in the audience knows you were. Right. All the viewers know it. Yeah, we're black shirt purposely for you. Okay. Uh, where's the other camera? Oh. Is that it? I'm sorry. You guys really got Didn't they grab it? Where is it? Didn't they grab it? Did you? Yeah. Then close the okay? Okay, great. Yeah, here it is. Close the Okay, yeah, thanks. There we go. Well, hold on. I screwed up something. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Okay. He's running my fashion model bow tie over here. Okay. Here we go. Let's go a little lower here. My God, three cameras. He's doing that. This is like a major production. <laughs> Hundred million dollar budget. Stan, if you could look right here, that's where I'm going to be. At. Right where my hand is. There you go. I'll come a little closer here. There we go. Scan, just give me a count to ten. I'm just going to get a level real quick. All right, I'm now giving you a voice level. I'm going to count to ten. I'm going to say one, followed immediately by two, and then three, four, five, six. I'm running out of breath. Okay, but I'm we're going to. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, not even close. Now the big thing is we have to make sure that I can hear you. Okay. I'll uh Okay, that's fine. Bye. Maybe we can have a translator stand yes. between you and me. Stan, uh, basically the day Jim Steranko walked into Marvel and he was bringing in his work, and I wanted to know the first impression you had of Steranko's work when he, when he presented it to you. Well, when I first saw Steranko's work, I said to myself, wow, this guy has a style all his own. Because um, a lot of the artists who worked for Marvel, they all worked in pretty much the same style. And Jim, Jim was as much of a designer as a comic book artist, and that was apparent the minute you looked at his work. My first thought was, will it be popular with the fans, because they're not used to seeing this type of thing. But then I looked at his artwork and I said, I love it, and I don't think I'm much different than the fans, and if I love it, why wouldn't they love it? So I didn't let Jim get away. I said, you got to do some work for us. Yeah. Damn right that was good. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you, when you brought in Nick, you know, and, uh, among the books, he uh, picked a book or which book? Why, why Nick Fury? How did that come to, to Jim? 
Well, it may sound funny, but usually when an artist came to work for us, we didn't have a choice of finding which was the best book for him to do. It was usually a case, which strip do I need an artist for? Because the artist just quit or something, or I wasn't satisfied. And uh, Captain America came to mind. I mean, we, we were, I was looking for an artist for Captain America. Hopefully, somebody would give it a different feeling, a, a newer, more original type of treatment. And then I saw Jim's artwork, and it was like kismet. It all came together. He, in Nick Fury, he really he, he he changed in terms of shapes of things. I mean, uh, he, he changed in terms in, of in, in Nick Fury. You know, he started Nick doing Fury. Yeah, the Agent of Shield. He started doing cinematic panels. And, yeah, uh, and and. Balloons were taken away, you know, no balloons, and the, and the action sequences were very dynamic. I mean, his storytelling technique was really, uh, had cha you know, was taking a different approach. Yeah. Jim's work, I guess if you had to find one word to describe it more than any other word, it would be cinematic. He did his strip as though you were watching a movie. In fact, um, with his shield strips, there were times when he had no dialogue at all on a page or pages. You just followed the action looking at the pictures the way you will in a motion picture sometimes where there's no dialogue and you just see the scenes. And as I say, Jim was as much or probably more of a designer than he was just a comic strip artist. And every thing he did, even before you looked at the individual panels to read what the story was, you were almost hypnotized by the look of the entire page, which generally looked like no other comic book page had ever looked. He, uh, he, also, he did a lot of other interesting, like even with Captain America, putting him in a graveyard, went very dark in some of the stories, and because he had actually started writing some of the Nick Fury. But he, he went almost gothic and dark, which was which had not been done before. Yeah. Jim was a man of many moods. There were scenes, Captain America stories, but it took place in a graveyard where the whole thing was gothic. It 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 didn't seem like the rest of the Marvel stories. It, and that's what I loved about Jim's artwork. It had its own style and its own feeling, and even his covers especially. His covers were works of art, works of modern, contemporary art. And um, they were so memorable. People today remember, his, even though he didn't do that many, mm -hmm. they remember his covers because, sort of like I remember when Will Eisner did The Spirit, the first page of every Spirit story had the title, The Spirit, but it wasn't just lettered. The letters were always part of an intricate design. And that's the way it was with Jim. Jim's covers weren't just drawings. They were very carefully thought out, intricate designs that were drawn. Right. And he also was, was he the first that actually started writing the stories himself and, and illustrating? No. Oh, oh, he was. No, we've we've had a lot of people oh. did that. Uh, the fact that Jim actually wrote some of the stories and did his own illustration, of course, helped to give his work that very individualistic style. And I was happy to let him write the stories because he was good. He, he, his work was so different and so original. I just wish he had stayed with it, but he did a number of strips, and then he stopped. Uh, there were other things, apparently, he wanted to work on, and it was our loss, yeah. because I would have just kept him doing our books forever. Right, right. Uh, Jim, uh, uh, was, Jim, was Jim difficult? I, I know him well, so I can ask. Was he difficult, or was that creative difficulty part of, you know, sort of his process? I had absolutely no difficulty working with Jim. I've always found the people who seem to be 
the most talented, I'd say 100% of the time, are the easiest to work with. It's usually the ones who feel a little insecure about their own work that sometimes give you problems as an editor or an art director. But Jim was a joy to work with, and he was the kind of guy, just give him his head, let him go, and you came out, you came... He brought back a great strip. Okay. How about that? Huh? Thank you. Pretty so damn much. good. I'll get that. You got a picture? Yep. Absolutely. You don't trust me, huh? He is. Oh, I did. He's going to run out. Wait till we'll run out. Yes, I have. Can my guy get a picture of you and me just a quick thing? And then I'm going to switch with him. All right, here we go. Thanks so much. Hold our glasses off. There we go. Yeah. A couple there. Perfect. There we go. And I'm going to get the other. Nice. Jason's going to get with you, and then this will not be done. You be sure to give Jim my regards. I will. I'm going to go out. Wow, see? Oh, is he here? He's here. We're shooting tomorrow. Maybe I'll see him. Yeah, yeah. We're shooting a little round table with some other artists. Sounds good. Thank you, man. Thank you. No blakes, no blakes, you good? Okay, good. Thanks a lot. Okay, pleasure. Okay, nice to see you. Yeah. You did a good job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good luck with the movie. Oh, good luck with the movie. Sure. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have my cell phone number for you? So, I need to. So, the last of the answers? Yeah. I actually have to sign at the bottom here. What I do is I add it. It's just like you do. It says that. that uh, the footage won't be used in anything outside of the same session. I think that's a two-minute show. What's your name? That's Jason. Oh, I think that's Jason. C-H-A-S-E-N. J-A-S-O-N. Oh, Jason. Sorry. Jason looking for his Argonaut. Me too. Yeah. You want to write it down? Cool. Do you want me to call you Jason? I don't know. You can call me when you're ready. I know. It's the one number I won't write tonight. Okay. Perfect. Great. Um, yeah. Also, if it's okay, I got a guy named Scott. Here you go. Here you go. Okay, thank you so much. Scott. Scott. And I need the location with tenfold Happy birthday? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to make it always good. I really, really appreciate it. Do you want to put your folder in my bag or something? Do you want to put your folder in my bag? I would have brought my birthday to my birthday. Ah. Yeah, just show that photo. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get the one you had given the finger, but it's going to come out quicker. Thank you again. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> 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 <cough